this next material is going to focus on the environment that the firm operates in. We're going to study four different operating environments. Perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. So what it is is different environments that a company operates in. You guys know that it's different to be a farmer versus an owner of Applebee's, right? They're different environments, different products, different people, different customers. So what we want to do is break down the unique characteristics of each because the behavior of the company within different environments is slightly different. We always come back to the basic premise that the firm is out to maximize what? Profits. Okay, not revenues, not costs, but the firm's objective is to maximize this expression. The difference between money in the cash register, total revenue, and total cost. Otherwise, profits. We've learned how this has different, takes on different forms, kind of goes up and down depending on elasticities. We've spent a lot of time in the last chapter learning about different types of costs, implicit costs, explicit costs, fixed costs, variable costs, all kinds of different cost curves uh, that the firm may face or cost situations. Now we're going to tie all that together. We're going to bring the demand side and the cost side and kind of blend them together and think about the environment that the firm has to operate in. What sort of constraints do they face? So I want to think about there being a spectrum of competition. And at one end of this spectrum is what economists call perfect competition. Perfect competition. At the other end of the spectrum is no competition. You are the only player in town. You have a monopoly. Now, you guys, most of you have probably played the board game Monopoly. What was your objective in the game? How do you win the game? You own everything, right? You keep buying up and you negotiate and you have multiple players. The goal of Monopoly is to become the last player standing that owns everything. You've made everybody else go under, basically. So that is our two extremes. Basically, no competition and perfect competition. Um, at these extremes, we've got different characteristics that allow that to happen. Why is there, you know, the economist is saying, why do some industries tend to gravitate towards there only being one firm, while other industries may gravitate towards there being a large number of small firms? Those are all questions that we want to try to tackle uh, in these upcoming four chapters. So we're going to spend all of chapter 12 in perfect competition. Then we'll head to chapter 13 for <coughs> monopoly. And then we get into the hybrids, which covers a lot of companies in between. Chapter 14 will be on monopolistic competition. You can see the whole word is kind of a blending of it. Monopolistic competition. Now look at where I put this on the spectrum, by the way. I, I should have said that before you guys started writing. Here's dead center of the spectrum. Monopolistic competition is more this way. In fact, you could probably make this hash mark a little more this way, too. It's really more like competition than it is like monopoly. So on your spectrum, make sure you kind of bring it this way, because it's more like competition than it is like monopoly. And then, so that'll be uh, chapter 14. And then another hybrid is called oligopoly. Oligopoly. And that'll be chapter 15. 